in the streets where it's tolerated, unwritten agreements. There are parts of Amsterdam where it's sold le over the counter in cafes, even advertised different brands of it. There are cards up with prices on public display. Um, so um, there has been a countervailing move in Europe. And so it's not as if this hysteria is gripped everywhere equally. Then we'll be seeing the um, increase of novelty and uh, cultural evolution in Europe outstripping developments in the United States, according to our well, to some benefit. it may in fact be happening. I mean, I certainly feel much more at the center of novelty when I'm in Germany, where, by the way, people smoke cannabis in restaurants and uh, uh, quite openly. The United States seems to be on a kind of fundamentalist religious bender that carry it in its attitude toward women's reproductive rights and drugs and all these things that is making us a kind of pariah in the first world. I mean, we represent values which are incomprehensible to educated Europeans. One thing that occurs to me that I'm sure Rupert would have enthusiasm for because it involves his grassroots science thing. This question of does it make you lazy, does it give you energy, does it destroy your memory, does it enhance your memory? Mm, because yeah. I've smoked so many years, so many different kinds of dope, uh, of cannabis, I've, tend, I've come to hold pretty strong opinions about its various forms. And I think that, number one, charas is a debilitating drug. It has opium in it, it has detura in it, and it has various additives and binders that are not good. Mm. Uh, marijuana, which is how most Americans smoke their uh, cannabis, involves the incineration of too much inert vegetable material so that you are getting pesticide residues, mm. carbon monoxide, tars, all of these things are complicating the question of what does cannabis do. Uh, to my mind, the true test of whether or not cannabis is a, uh, what the pharmacological effects of cannabis are, we should almost restrict our discussion to high-grade Lebanese hashish which is truly nothing but the compressed resin of the female cannabis plant. And that's the classical uh, hashish of the Arab, and that's what I prefer and feel almost to be a different drug from both uh, Mexican marijuana and Pakistani or Indian hashish. Those things do carry uh, uh, detrimental uh, uh, qualities that are not present in the pure, for instance, three lion or so-called red Lebanese hashish. That's the hashish that we want. That's the cannabis product that I would feel is the one that everyone should smoke before they judge or form a strong opinion about what cannabis can do. In spite of the in increasingly repressive atmosphere in the United States, I imagine that marijuana smoking is still on the increase. I mean, it's very widely used, at, at least uh, secretly. They claim not, but there's a decrease. Slow, in slight tonnage. Yeah, they claim so. Mm. It's still, it's widespread, sufficiently widespread that a certain amount of grassroots scientific experimentation could be going on if there was a way to share the results of the experiments. Yes, this is something that grassroots, no pun intended, grassroots science could uh, tell us is the relative benignity of various forms of, uh, of hashish or of cannabis. Indeed, yes, I and mean, probably a fairly easy project to carry out. I mean, assuming people had access to supplies of which they could compare. Mm -hmm. There's not the testing labs available. I don't know if they still are on the streets in Berkeley or San Francisco, for example. You could take your specimen of hashish and find out if it was opiated or not. 
yes, that is a simple test, but questions about tars, pesticide residues, carbon monoxide uh, output, the various methods of smoking. Well, you'd have to have a revival of kitchen chemistry, as it were. Right. But um, I think that uh, pure, the pure resin of the cannabis plant is... Uh, you would be hard-pressed to design a drug uh, with as many uh, laudable qualities as that one. Hmm. Mm, so then perhaps we should consider what would happen if the trend that's happening in Europe anyway continues, if cannabis is yes. actually legalized, which is, as I say, it's already de facto legalized in parts of Germany, Switzerland, Italy, even to an extent in Britain. Um, so what would happen? I mean, I, it's not a prospect I actually ever relish, because um, I then imagine, you know, Philip Morris, and, yes. and you know, Anglo-American Tobacco Corporation moving into this area and you know, there's no doubt the restrictions on their commercials but um, the idea that this could then be a mass marketed product for large scale international corporations would be in on it, BCCI mm. um, well the, the, the main high street banks and, and, and so on would, would then be financing these deals rather than uh, they take over the role of BCCI quite legally yes. um, I'm not sure that I particularly uh, relish that. And the other issue which we haven't talked about, which is no doubt of some concern to, to you, Terence, is you know, at what age children might be permitted or encouraged to experiment with cannabis. And would we want this to be going on in, in, in the gazebo here at Essendon, in nursery schools, you know, junior high school? Um, you know, if it's legalized and much more readily available, the same questions would arise as arise already, but more so because it would be more available. Well, I I prefer decriminalization rather than legalization. I don't think we need to uh, simply say that any entrepreneur can invest in land, plant cannabis patent a brand name and begin to sell it on the open market. It would be much better simply to decriminalize it so that, and say something like, uh, each person could possess ten plants, but that the transport and sale of it would be discouraged in some way, so that it isn't you see, we seem to have the attitude that something is either illegal or we can just go gung ho with it and turn it into a meg the product of a multi million dollar corporation. It would be much better to just say that the possession of small amounts of cannabis for personal use pose no threat to society and leave it at that. So well, how are you going to get your red Lebanese then? Well, you would uh, find a way, just as one finds a way today. Here, if there was a government hash shop. Yes, uh, although I don't find it difficult to, find, to get red Lebanese. The only thing I would hope is that we might get a price break if it were decriminalized. It's currently being sold because it's an illegal commodity. It's being sold at an uh, enormous market for what it costs to produce it. And this might be something... It's a very expensive business. Well, uh, why, why we have legal alcohol and some of the other things, why not simply legal so there can be shops, there can be huge industries, and there can be um, gourmet growers using special methods and... Like wine, you mean? Like wine. Exactly. Well, but then you have these problems, which Rupert what is problems? pointing out. But once more, it's handed over to Madison Avenue to be turned into something where they can't simply say it's available to those who want it. Well, people in downtown New York City are not going to be able to grow eight or ten plants themselves. I 
was recently in downtown New York City, and I examined a pot garden that would have been the envy of any resident of Humboldt County. Real estate is expensive. <laughs> 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 